Sports World paints a picture-perfect day as we travel to picturesque Paris, France for the IBF Junior Middleweight Championship. Carlos Santos captured the crown last November when he upset a tough Mark Vidal in one of the most exciting fights of 1984. Today, he makes his first defense of the IBF belt against local favorite Louis Acarius. His last fight with former WBA Junior Middleweight Champion Davey Moore ended in the night with a late right hand. Moore was disqualified, Acarius awarded the victory. These two ring veterans meet at a scheduled 15 round title matchup. And then it's red hot action as Top Fuel's fans. For sure, it is springtime in Paris, and Paris is bubbling with excitement. A busy time for European sports fans with this city, the setting for the French Open tennis tournament and for boxing. We are outdoors at the Parc de Prince Stadium, and we welcome you. Hi, everybody. Marv Albert, along with the fight doctor, Ferdy Pacheco. We have boxing coming up here on Sports World. IBF junior middleweight champion Carlos Santos defending that title. He comes in at 27 and 1, 19 by knockout. He'll be going against Louis Acarius. He is the one time European champion from Algeria who has become a be back huge today. favorite here in Paris. Something that you can certainly uh, relate to as one who has become a cult figure to Frenchmen within the space of what, two, three days? <laughs> That's true, but nothing like Acarius. The Paris crowd is convinced that he is going to be the next world champion. And of course, this crowd is going to play a big factor as it will certainly steam up our carriers to do his best. They expect in the area of 18,000 to show up for the fight. It should also be pointed out that the officials will be neutral. All three judges from the United States and the referee, Larry Hazard, also from the States. And as always, it's going to be settled inside that ring. It'll be Santos with his great gliding skill as a boxer against the rugged, tough Acarius coming forth, trying to take the crown away from Santos. The classic confrontation, a boxer against a puncher. We'll be back to take a closer look at Santos and Acarius from the Parc de Prince in Paris, France, as NBC Sports World continues. Surprising Vidal with an aggressive performance, and Carlos came up with the upset win. In his last fight, this past March, it was Santos over Dwight Tiger Walker by virtue of a majority decision. So Santos has won nine in a row, extending his record to 27 and 1. And today he faces Louis Acarius, who was involved in a strange affair in his last outing back in December. It was former champion Davey Moore with a clear-cut edge over Acarius as they battle their way to round number nine. A round that ended with Moore landing after the bell. A flagrant foul that led to Moore being disqualified, although flat on his back, Acarius awarded the victory in a bizarre turn of events. The fight doctor talked with Acarius and Santos about today's fight. Champ, you're going to be fighting with a Frenchman before a large French audience. Does that affect the way you fight? Bueno, yo pienso que venir a Francia a pelear un campeonato en sí no hay problema y sí por la decisión, ve, porque como estoy entre los franceses. That's a chance you have to take when you come to France to fight before Frenchmen. The only way to solve the problem is to knock out your opponent. What do you see as the decisive factor between you and your opponent which will give you the victory? I think my speed and maneuverability in the opening rounds will be the decisive factor. Akaris, if he doesn't get off at the beginning rounds, just tightens up and doesn't fight for the rest of the fight. Luis, you won by disqualification with Davey Moore. Was that a disappointment to you? Did you think you were going to win anyway? Yes, I would have won before the limit because Davey Moore was worn out completely by the ninth round. Okay. How do you fight a Carlos Santos, a man that doesn't come to fight like Davy Moore, but comes to box and runs a lot? C'est un combat très différent, mais il faudra trouver la solution. Je me suis préparé. It's a fight completely different than Davy Moore, but I have the solution. And we'll soon learn whether Louis Acarius has the solution. Louis Acarius has made his way to the ring here in Paris, record of 39 and 5. 19 by knockout, 27 of his 44 fights have taken place here in Paris. And Carlos Santos. Now headed toward the ring, 29 years old, out of Puerto Rico. He represented Puerto Rico 
of the 1976 Olympics, fighting then as a welterweight. Record of 27 and 1, and only loss. He dropped a 15 round decision to Wilfred Benitez in 1981 at the time. Benitez was the WBC junior middleweight champion. Had a poor performance by Santos, who ran around the ring for 15 rounds doing Zippo. So here is Carlos Santos, who has won his last nine fights, five of the nine by knockout. He is the IBF junior middleweight champion. And Louis Acarius says he will not be bothered by the unorthodox style of uh, Santos, which includes the shifting from side to side, the circling, and the southpaw stance. Santos and Acarius in the ring and ready. We'll be back right after these messages. Back at Parc de Prince in Paris, site of the European Cup Soccer Championship last year, and this stadium can hold 50,000 for boxing. The capacity for today, 24,000. They expect in the range of 17, 18. And they are here to root for Louis Arcarius. Out of Algeria now living just outside of Paris. As he goes against the IBF junior middleweight champion, Carlos Santos. Introduction of Santos. And Louis Acarius, greeted by the crowd. Acarius weighed in at 154. Santos, 153 and a half. Santos has a two inch advantage in reach. Carlos Santos, who began his professional career back in May of 1977, opening with a second round knockout, demonstrated a very hefty left hand in that bout with Mark Vidal last November. Santos repeatedly scoring with the left that effectively went to the body. He also had excellent lateral movement. And uh, Santos, a guy who had been a runner throughout most of his career. Yeah, that was his problem. Uh, he was a fine boxer, but he just didn't have the uh, the stamina to stand and, bo and punch with someone, so he just boxed and ran around, and consequently he wasn't a great attraction, but he steadily built forth an undefeated record until he had that uh, disastrous meeting with Wilfredo Benitez, which was no big loss in those days, because Benitez was very good at that time. Larry Hazard is the referee. The scoring is on the 10-point bus system handled by the three judges. Rudy Battle of Los Angeles, Larry Wallace of New Jersey, Charlie Baker of Las Vegas. No standing eight. There is a mandatory eight. Three knockdown rule not in effect. The bell does not save the fighter except in the final round. As we see, Santos came out to pop that jab. He's a left-hander, as you can see, much more uh, uh, busy than he usually is in the opening stanza, but Akara's living true to form. He just keeps those gloves up, waits for the other guy to get tired, discouraged, or frustrated, and then comes on. Don't expect much from him in this first round, because that's just not his style. yelling for Santos to hit those arms to try to make them come down. Don't just go to the head. He's hitting nothing but those red gloves that you see in front of Akaris' face. A sort of modified Gallic peekaboo style a la Floyd Patterson. Minute gone by. First round is scheduled for 15. A minute which has not seen Luis Akaris throw anything. Well, Santos must have thrown 50 punches. I'll tell you one thing, if Akaris is waiting for Santos to get tired bouncing around like that, he's got enough thought coming because that's exactly how he fights. Just bouncing up and down, bipping and bopping, not really getting set to throw anything hard. Of course, in the meantime, 
No question about it. He builds up points. It is his championship. You do have to come get it. And Acarius just remains in the peekable stance. Under a minute left in this first round. Can you see what the boos would be like? <laughs> Could you hear the thunderous boos if this were any place but Paris? And Acarius has shown no desire to fight in this first round whatsoever. It's just his style. Time he throws a semblance of a punch, the crowd reacts, and that has not happened frequently. This cannot even be charitably described as a feeling out round. This is more of an anesthetic, it'll put you to sleep if more of these come along. But that's just not a carriage style. A carriage starts in the third or fourth round to unload. Santos in this first round. And this is round two. Louis Acarius in the white. Carlos Santos in the white with the red trim. And Santos has done all the punching to this point. And Santos landing with the right hand. But the way he holds his gloves at Karras, he doesn't land on much but the top of his head and some of that glove. So he is protecting his nose, his eyes, his chin. Nothing of consequence is being hit. Building up points, true, but not sapping the strength nor doing any damage to the challenge. A Karras' his trainer, Chuck Talhammy of Miami, telling me he's got him trained to go to the body when things get start to get tough in the third and fourth round so far he hasn't even shown a whisper of an inclination to go to the body much less the head Santos corner has been telling him hit the arms or at least hit the flanks hit the side low 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 from Carlos Santos and right on the job, Larry Hazard, who controls the fight just about as good as anybody refereeing today. Halfway mark, round two. Louis Acarius has been very selective with his punches, landing several times here in the second round and then hearing it from the crowd. Crowd at this point overreacting. Out of desperation, I would think. The fact remains that as Carlos just bips and bops, as Santos just moves around, he gets a little tired, he gets a little frustrated, and above all, he gets careless. At that careless moment, in two or three occasions, Zacharias has been able to land a flush on the jaw. Nice combination by Santos. Continues to shift from side to side. Well, Louis Acarius, in his brief talk with you, said he had the solution to beating Carlos Santos. So we have seen no signs of a solution to this point unless he feels he could just wait it out and then strike later on. It's, his solution must be to bore uh, Carlos Santos to death, along with the audience, but that's not the case. That's just the way he fights. Do not lose track of the fact that he will come on in the third and fourth and fifth round and start fighting. Final seconds, round two. Listen. Carl with the fight, Dr. Ferdy Pacheco. We're at the Parc de Prince Stadium in Paris. Paris, very, very busy time for uh, sports fans these days. Uh, the French Open underway nearby. Boxing here, drawing in the area of 15,000. As Carlos Santos defends his IBF junior middleweight title against Louis Acarius. Hey, hey, hey. 
Kara is bending down, and therefore the champion saw a shot at an uppercut, uppercut which he landed on the forehead of Lewis Akaris. Nothing is happening below the eyebrows. He keeps them covered with those red gloves. And Santos right back after Akaris landed, which got the crowd going. Santos trying to pay more attention to that body, but it is difficult to hit, and he's been landing some low blows, which got by Larry Hazard. Santos still on his toes, moving from side to side, giving him all kind of motion and very little to hit. Halfway mark. This is round three. Oh, good right play hand by Acarius. His best throw of the bout. That's what we were describing. That's what he waits for. He waits for frustration to build up, carelessness on the part of the champion, and all of a sudden he lets fly one of his hard punches. Of course, that doesn't make up for the 25 he took before that on the judges' scorecards. Still, he's gambling that his punch will be big enough to either stop the champion or make him change his web fighting. Arcarius with the left hand. When's the last time you saw a left jab draw applause like that? A simple little left jab and it began to roar. get underway with the gun sound rather than the bell. Sounds like the last wars of Fu Manchu. It's a gong that sounds as if you expect to see people come out with a tray of French or Chinese hors d'oeuvres. Back to the same thing that carried the first three for the champion, Carlos Santos. I just leaned over and said to Wilfredo Gomez, who's working in the corner, why doesn't he go more to the body? And Gomez says he doesn't have to. He's winning every uh, round easy this way, and he can go 15 just like this. Carlos Santos continuing to paint Louis Arcarius. Santos at 27 and 1, 19 by knockout. His only loss, dropping a 15-round decision to Wilfredo Benitez back in 1981. An impressive victory over Mark Medal at the Felt Forum at the Madison Square Garden in New York last November. A stirring fight selected as fight of the year by KO Magazine. Certainly one of the better fights of 1984, with Santos pulling off a surprise and a furious bout. His last fight back in March in Atlantic City, scoring a majority decision over Dwight Tiger Walker in a non title affair. So this is the first defense of his IBF Junior Middleweight Championship. I don't know about Santos' legs, but his arms are going to get tired. He has just been flailing away. Nobody can do that three minutes of every round and not take a little breather. He is now beginning to miss badly as Carlos Santos. He's just throwing punches without regard for any counter-punching on the part of the uh, challenger, Luis Acaris. Acaris maintaining his poise, patience, and continuing to be just uh, another heavy bag that Carlos Santos is punching. <laughs> Coming up.
coming up on 15 seconds left. This is the fourth round. And Atarius delivering to the hip of Santos. Final seconds. Round four. Back in Parc de Prince Stadium, Paris, France. This is round five. It is scheduled for 15. Carlos Santos, 29 years old, out of Puerto Rico. He's the IBF junior middleweight champion. He is a, uh, on the right, going up against Louis Acarius, out of Algeria, now living in Paris. And it has been a very passive Acarius to this point. All Santos. Yes, I would say quite unofficially, but I'd be willing to bet the judges are with me. It's, uh, to this point, a shutout, 40 to 36. 20 and 30 blows to one. And Santos now getting through the gloves of Acarius, who opened up in peekable fashion the first two rounds. Again, the uh, crowd getting excited as Acarius is able to uh, occasionally unleash. We saw Santos shake his head, saying, "No, uh, no effect at all." I'll tell you what the effect of all those punches are are uh, on Carlos Santos. He's not punching with uh, the crisp authority that he began. He certainly has no steam behind those punches. He's sort of just letting them fly out there. If he would vary them, just kind of pip along, and then every once in a while land something very strong, it could uh, catch a carrier. <laughs> it's the fifth round, and the carrier better start thinking about doing some fighting if he wants to stay in this fight. A little backhand maneuver by Santos. It, he has been doing that all through this fight. Uh, Hazard warned him once, half a warning side, don't do that. And uh, that's a sign that he's getting a little tired of just punching away. Still in all, the lack of charge and effectiveness of Luis that carries his cost in these rounds. He cannot hope to win a championship or even a round at this rate. Coming up on 30 seconds to go in the fifth round. And we so often the carriers will throw the right hand and land. And now flicking the left out. But Santos right back. Dr. Ferdy Pacheco, is it possible that uh, Louis Acarius, who claimed in the pre-fight interview that he has the solution, although he did not reveal it, is it possible he has Santos where he wants him, wants Santos to punch himself out, because if that is his plan, very effective. He's very effective in that. Either that or he's trying to put him to sleep. I'm not sure which, but the audience is certainly must be thinking of catching some shut-eye if Acarius doesn't start here pretty soon. He'll be so far behind, there's no way he can win. He began at the end of that last round to start trading, and uh, this is usually the time when he starts stepping on the gas, and he certainly has opened the round that way. He's done more punching in the first few seconds of this round uh, than he's done previously. Oh, there's a right hand, although Santos laughed it off, but a bit jolt him to the ropes. Santos is just slowing up from, from the momentum of so much punching, and uh, his punches have nothing in them, no sip. After all, folks, this is only the sixth round of a 15-rounder. Akaris, however, is taking more blows now fully on the face than he was in the opening rounds when he held those gloves up so tightly to his face that nothing was coming in. And Akaris with the right hand. 
again the backhanding by Santos and gets the warning from the referee Larry Hazard. It's the mark of a tired fighter, as well as a frustrated fighter. He just hits him every which way, and he backhands him a lot. That was a real sharp, hard punch by Karras that didn't hit anything but shoulders. But that's the kind of punch that can put a change in the complexion of this fight. Less than a minute left. Sixth round. Watching what can be labeled punch punching by Carlos Santos. As if he would be scoring points just by making contact. Yeah, almost like an amateur fight or a... Um, sword fight with very light swords. been ready to cheer anything that Akira has, has done has had no reason to cheer now for six full rounds and that will do it for round six don't do anything different don't get careless and above all keep the pace going just like it's going I wish I could understand French because I'd like to know what's going on in the other corner and this is round seven. And Santos opening open by uh, continuing to pop away at the Loya Carrius. Now we're hearing some whistles from the crowd here in Paris. Well, I, I think it's time for Luis to mount a head-to-head, toe-to-toe kind of attack and try to get this Santos down off his toes and also in the vain hope of winning one of these rounds. Whistles indicating the uh, dissatisfaction on the part of the crowd. Not much happening here. Now the crowd looking to get behind the carrier. Just a handful of freshmen who have uh, succeeded in the world of boxing. Only several have hit uh, championship status. Uh, Marcel Serdan, George Carpentier, Marcel Fields. Among those who have reached those heights. Well, off his performance tonight, one wonders what in the world was Davey Moore thinking about. How could he have lost a fight to a man that doesn't fight? like uh, Luisa Carras. Of course, it was, as we know, a controversial uh, decision. He was knocked out after the bell rang. Actually, the best thing that Carras did that particular night was stay on the canvas. A, a wild fight that uh, concluded in a victory for Carras against Davey Moore when Moore clocked Carras with a hard right to the jaw after the bell and rung. Ending the ninth round, disqualified and Akarius declared the winner, although Moore was ahead on the scorecard. I would imagine well ahead. I, I understood the managers almost had a better fight after than the fighters had during. But I can't imagine either one of these two guys in with a very large junior middleweight like John Abish Mugabe or anybody else. Good right hand. Best punch of the fight by Akarius. And now a little blood on the right Final seconds, round seven, things beginning to heat up. Particularly the uh, final minute of the round. 
You're being charitable when you say the best action may be the only action. And certainly the only action by the challenger, but we told you this guy likes to come on late. He certainly has accomplished what he set out to do. He's got Carlos just flailing away with no power to his punches, whereas uh, Akaris throws with a great deal of force. It was unquestionably Luis Akaris' best round of the fight. should have kept Carlos Santos in the corner and gone toe-to-toe -to -toe with him. Big right hand by Carrius as they come up on the midway point of this eighth round. It's scheduled for 15 and nothing at all on the punches of Carlos Santos. Just did connect with an elbow, though, to the head of a carrier. He's not even bouncing as good as he was before. And this guy can bounce for 15 rounds, but... beginning to land. And the chant of Santos uh, from some fans who have made it here from Puerto Rico. Barbecuing. Oh, nine. Marv Albert with the fight, Dr. Ferdy Pacheco from Park to Prince Stadium in Paris. It is nighttime here in Paris. Carlos Santos, the IBF junior middleweight champion. On the left, Maria Carius, big favorite here in France. On the right, with Carius beginning to show some signs. Good uppercut just in by Carius. It's unquestionably his technique and formula. Uh, if he can pull it off, then he really deserves to be champion because that means he now has to fight like a fury for, from round 9 to round 15. So far, the, the fight has been relatively easy to score if you like to add 10 because the champion, Carlos Santos, has taken every round. Talk here in Paris is that if Macarius can beat Santos, Macarius would eventually fight the WBA welterweight champ, Donald Curry, although Curry and Nook McCrory may need in a unification bout. I sincerely hope not for the sake of both fighters because Curry is head and shoulders above either one of these two fighters. He's one of the coming stars in the next few years in boxing is Donald Curry. Short right hand did not make full of contact on Santos. that right hand showing confidence that he can get it in he's showing a completely different style now now the gloves are not up in a protective fashion now the gloves are down in a punching fashion which means he's looking to just wail away now we've got a different challenger now Lisa Karras the puncher has taken over look at the difference in the way he jabs right hand cocked ready to go Look at the difference in Santos, no longer bouncing around, bipping and bopping. And he's landing with that right hand. Good right hand under the heart. 
It kind of takes the legs out. Another right hand low by our Karras. Well, a me or you kind of fighter has emerged from the corner of Lisa Karras. That's a different guy than fought the last first last eight rounds. Suspension. Well, we are carriers out for round 10, meeting up with Carlos Santos. And you get the idea that uh, things have turned around. Acarius obviously changing his style, going away from the peekaboo and taking an early hammering, looking to wait it out against Carlos Santos, feeling that Santos would tire himself out. And now Acarius looking to land with the right. Carries has a terrible habit of every time he gets hit near the ropes, he falls into the ropes. Like it's, it's almost as if giving the impression that a great deal of effectiveness was with the blow. Even if he wasn't hurt, it looked like he was hurt the way he falls into that rope. Now he looks to use the ropes for strength, but it appeared that he was on his way down. If that's a, a style of fighting, it certainly is a poor one. We saw him doing it yesterday in the gym, but I thought he was just kidding around in the gym. That's certainly no habit to cultivate. Right at the end of the last round, a Karras hit Santos a good left hook, which seemed to shake him coming back to the corner, although he shook his head no. tenth round and using the ropes for uh, acceleration to get himself uh, back on and look at the way a carriage backs off instead of throwing a punch just then Please hit me. I'm coming off defensively. Combination by 
Santos getting it. To finish the thought I had in the last round, I'd like to get in the heads of the referee and see uh, the uh, judges to see how they measure the difference between a guy that pity pats 10 or 20 punches and a guy that lands two or three real hard shots that connect. That's always uh, subjective, and therefore unofficially on my scorecard, I have my head 98 to 93 is the champion, Carlos Santos. One of the early rounds, it was strictly Santos, Acarius not punching at all, so you'd have to go with Santos. Well, that's absolutely, he just didn't punch at all. I don't think there's a doubt in anybody's mind. Now he's the pursuer, he's the hunted, he lands the stronger blows. It's a different fight right now than what we watched in the first four or five rounds. The cut on the right brows beginning to trickle blood. Chuck Talhammy of Miami working hard on that cut. Under a minute left. And the 11th round is scheduled for 15. And once again, Louis Acarius holding the hands down low. He was quickly protected the first part of this fight. Out of the peekaboo. Had been butting heads. Hazard said, watch that head. And Acarius landed the right hand. getting it with the jab. The Paris version of the gun show to get the rounds underway as we open up in this 12th round, slated for 15 from Park to Fritz Stadium in Paris. Proud of 15,000 on hand and rooting for the most part for Louis Acarius, one-time European junior middleweight and middleweight champion, born in Algeria, now living in Nogia, just outside of Paris, record of 39 and 5, 19 by knockout, going up against the idea junior middleweight champion Carlos Santos from Puerto Rico, record of 27 and 1, 19 by KO. Santos doesn't stay there long enough to become a stationary target. He just keeps moving. Again, signs of the uh, backhand attempt by uh, Santos. Although Larry Hazard, the referee, let that one go by. Conditioned fighter has to be to keep up this kind of a pace. Now it looks like a carrot can only hope to be hit after the gong and carried out is the only way he can win this fight now. Although, of course, it's quite unofficial. We have seen strange, strange things happen over the last few weeks, but this would be one of the strangest. Carlos Santos is not comfortably ahead right now on the scorecard. Santos back pedaling, obviously slips. Akaris apparently has never learned how to punch in bunches. He, he punches once and just stands there instead of following the punch. He gets in close where he can punch. He can go to the body, and he doesn't. Looks to load up with that right hand. Occasionally, he has... Oh, there it is. But it caught the glove of Santos. Occasionally, he gets in with the left. Now, that was the kind of right hand he wanted to land. But nothing much is happening when he lands it. Again, Santos using the elbow. 
and making contact with Artarius. When the big you. And this is round 13. And Louis Acarius is putting himself into a position where he will lead a knockout. Well, I think he's been in that position for a little while now. Unofficially, I have it 118 to 111. And Carlos Santos does not seem to give up the idea of moving around looks like a bunch of Indians circling a wagon train. The guy is just immobile in the middle. We're at the Parc de France in Paris, France. And just minutes away, the uh, French Open tennis tournament is uh, taking place. There is the women's top seed, Martina Navratilova check out the fisticuffs here French Open on NBC and our coverage will get underway tomorrow at 4 o'clock Eastern Time to get Bert McCullen calling the shots and that lady has got a champion's heart she is a fighter seen the difference between fast reflexes and slow thought out punching a carrot has to think to throw a punch whereas Santos is just throwing them from all angles non-stop just triggering them off no contest when it comes to the reflexes of these two boxes Santos won his IBF crown with that upset win over Mark Vidal in New York last November. And uh, that was a very exciting bout in contrast to what we have seen here most of the day. But it takes two fighters. Luis Arcaris is no Mark Vidal. Mark Vidal has a lot of energy and a lot of talent. Not to say that Acarius could not land here and, and end it with a, a big right hand, but it has not been an interesting bout. Well, that's what makes boxing interesting. A guy like this can neutralize, like Acarius, can neutralize him with one good shot. And of course, he's looking desperately to land it. That's his hope. But he has been frustrated to now. Final second. Round 13. And this is round 14. Carlos Santos now back to his uh, shifting from side to side and looking to come to life as they open up the 14th. And Santos back on the attack and again is warned about the backhand maneuver. Wondering when Haz is going to get tired of that and take a round away from um, Carlos Santos. He certainly has got a few to spare. Good body shot by Santos that time. Santos, who seemed to tire in the middle round, worn down by using uh, Louis Acarius as a punching bag, now showing some steam. And, and conversely, Louis Acarius went back up to that peekaboo style again and abandoned the uh, all-out attack. A corner can't possibly think he's in this fight. Therefore, I'm wondering why the defensive tactic. And Santos continues to paint Arcarius. Every so often, Arcarius will load up and look to throw that big right hand. Warning to Santos, keep them up. They were not flagrantly low punch. Santos right back, a second.
righteousness following the attack by a carrier. He's not hurting a carrier, but a carrier just can't find him. Look at that. By the time he wound up to throw that, our carrier was all the way down to Champs-Élysées. He was so far away from him. Under a minute left in his 14th round. continues to step in, pop and then stay outside. For some unknown reason, they have turned on the lights in the upper deck as if uh, to try to get the landing beacon in for uh, our carriers. Maybe something will help them get that punch in there. Right now, Santos continues to be Wilder and Pummelin. by Carlos Santos to conclude this 14th round. Welcome back to the Paris Grand, the Park de Prince Stadium site of the European Cup Soccer Championship last year. And the site of Carlos Santos and Louis Arcarius. Marv Albert with the fight doctor, Ferdy Pacheco. It is all he did have a, a, a down period, round 8, 9, and 10, but has picked it right back up after beginning a very strong fashion against Akarian. Well, if they told him to take it easy, he sure is not taking it easy. At best, at best, I don't think Akarian could have won more than three rounds of this fight thus far, but he continues. Carlos does to seek the knockout. And his upset victory over Mark Vidal, Santos changed his reputation from runner to a hitter, and he has been the man unleashing most of this foul. Well, he's savoring an easy victory here. He certainly can outspeed this man, and a carry is for his part to just stand his ground and flail away because it's the only chance he's got. This defensive posture that he's in is just uh, one that indicates he's resigned and just wants to make it to the distance. Just past the halfway mark, 15th and final round. And apparently the solution that Acarius uh, discussed earlier was to wait it out and then try to land thinking that Santos would tire himself out, it has not worked. Well, the best laid plans. It is difficult to uh, know what's going to happen to you when you get into that ring. You have to, good fighters are the ones that can vary their game plan and adjust to the situation. A carriage was not able to adjust to Carlos Santos. And we're coming up. Uh, 30 seconds left of the fight. So Colonel Santos, the IBF junior middleweight champion, providing all kinds of problems for the uh, French favorite, Louis Arcarius. And it should be a clear-cut decision for Santos. Final seconds in this final round. And that will do it. So they go the distance. And as the Santos corner celebrates, we'll be back with the official decision after these messages. Well, the fight doctor scorecard had it clear-cut 148-138 for Carlos Santos. Now we're set for the official one. Let's go to the ring. Okay, again. Carlos Santos, please.
Anderson had it 147, 139 for Santos. Chuck Finger, 147, 138 for Santos. And a surprising card from Rudy Battle had it only one point in Santos' favor, 143, 142. But it is a unanimous decision. Carlos Santos successfully defending his IBF junior middleweight yeah. crowd over Louis Arcarius. Uh, the fight doctor in the ring alongside Carlos Santos. Peleaste muy bien, ganaste casi todos los rounds. Pensaste que iba a ser tan fácil. No, no pensé que iba a ser tan fácil, ya que me dicen que él es fuerte, pero con los primeros rounds me cansé un poco, pero cogí el aire bajando. I said, he took almost every round. Did you think it was going to be that easy? He said, no, I thought this guy was trying to get me tired, and I got tired in the middle, but I came back. En, en lo último estaba tan fuerte sí, como siempre. me vino más fuerte que en el primer round. He said at the 15th round, he was stronger than he was at the first round because he was in such good shape he was ready to go 20. Usted creía, tra estaba tratando para el knockout en el último round. En el asalto. último round, porque lo vi flojo. Y yo estaba bien, pero es fuerte. I asked him, did he go for a knockout in that last round? And he said, yes, I saw him tire and for the first time feel my punch. I went for it, but I couldn't get him. He was a tough and determined challenger. Y ahora qué? Bueno, ahora esperamos que los managers me busquen otro. All right, and now what he said, we want anybody we can for the title. We're the champion. We're ready to fight. And so from Paris, I send it back to Marv Albert at ringside in Paris. All right, Bertie, Carlos Santos over Louis Acarius in a no question about it, although still difficult to understand the scorecard of one of the judges, Rudy Battle, had it only 1.143 1 to 142. Marv Albert and the fight doctor, Ferdy Pacheco, sending it back to Bill McAtee at our studios in New York.